I think we're living through the greatest age of discovery our civilization has known. We voyage to the farthest reaches of the solar system. We photograph strange new worlds, stood in unfamiliar landscapes, tasted alien air. But the one thing we haven't found on those worlds is the thing that makes our planet unique. Life. Ever since the invention of the telescope 400 years ago, we've looked to our neighbouring worlds for signs of life. As technology has improved, we've been able to search the planets in more and more detail, and we've found nothing. But that doesn't mean the rest of the solar system is dead, because we're only beginning to scratch the surface of what's out there. There are literally hundreds of other worlds, planets and their moons, which we've barely explored. Among them may be worlds that hold the conditions to support life. And the best way to find out what those conditions are is to look at the one place we know life flourishes. The Earth. The Earth is the only planet that currently has liquid water on its surface. The other planets are either too close to the Sun, like Mercury, and baked dry, or they're too far away. Saturn's rings are made of water, but in the depths of space, it's frozen into lumps of solid ice. But that doesn't mean that liquid water has never existed elsewhere in the solar system. And if it has, we should be able to find the evidence. Because wherever water goes, it leaves its footprints. These are the scablands a remote part of the northwestern United States. It's one of the most spectacular places to come to see how water carves its signature into the landscape. The Scablands reveal the characteristic signature that water carves into the landscape. It's a signature that can be seen from space and not just on the Earth. When we turn our telescopes on our next door neighbour and prime candidate for finding alien life, the planet Mars, we find almost identical features cut into its surface. The red planet is covered in outflow channels. Straight, wide canyons exactly like the Scablands and they're filled with identical geological features. It all suggests that similar huge floods once tore across the surface of Mars. This is a picture of here from the air. I'm sat somewhere around here. And here are the, the horseshoe shapes of the dry falls, which are just over there. This is a picture taken of the surface of Mars, and you see those typical horseshoe shapes of the falls. Also, you see these structures upstream of the falls, these, these grooves cut into the landscape, and you see that here, grooves 
cut into the landscape as the water cascades down and then flows over the falls and cuts the gigantic valleys out as it moves downstream. So, all this adds up, I think, to an overwhelming smoking gun that there were vast amounts of water that flowed very quickly over the surface of Mars at some point in the past. Over the last 35 years, we've landed six robot probes on Mars. And one of them, Opportunity, is still rolling across the surface investigating the Martian geology. You can't really get to know another planet from orbit. You've got to get down onto the surface, you've got to touch it, you've got to dig down and examine it microscopically. And the rovers really have by doing that, made some extremely important scientific discoveries. One of the most significant of those discoveries was made in November 2004. The Opportunity rover was examining an impact feature called the Endurance Crater, when it detected deposits of a remarkable mineral. This is gypsum, and it's exactly the same stuff that Opportunity found on the surface of Mars. The only way we know of, the only way to make gypsum here on Earth, is to have calcium and sulphate ions in the presence of liquid water. So, large deposits of gypsum on the surface of Mars tells you that there must have been big areas of water present for a very long time. The discovery of gypsum has helped build a picture of an ancient Mars that was much warmer and wetter. Subsequent discoveries of gypsum in networks of sand dunes suggest that large areas of Mars were once covered in standing water. And where there is standing water, there is the chance of life. But although it may once have been more hospitable, any liquid water has long since disappeared from the surface of Mars. About three billion years ago, it died as a planet. Its core froze, and the volcanoes that have produced its atmosphere seized up. The solar wind stripped away the remains of that atmosphere. Any liquid water would have evaporated or soaked into the soil where it froze. It left the surface of Mars too cold, too exposed and too dry to support life. Now it's highly unlikely that there'll be life on the surface of Mars today, but that's not to say that life couldn't exist somewhere on the red planet. And maybe we're just looking in the wrong place. There are other potential habitats for life on Mars. Detailed pictures of the surface show the entrances to caves, revealing the existence of a world beneath the Martian surface. We know there may be water down there, Satellite data shows permafrost, ice frozen in the soil. Deep below the surface, that ice may melt to form liquid water. It all hints at an undiscovered subterranean world that may be a more likely place to find life. Yeah, you see, look at that. That, that, well, what looks like water, that secretion dripping off the snotites, has actually got a pH of, well, it's now about between 0.5 and 0. I mean, that's strong acid. That's as, that's as strong as battery acid. It's actually highly concentrated sulfuric acid. 
So what a what a strange organism. It's alien in every sense of the word, except that it's present on the well just below the surface of our planet. And the snotites are not alone. Organisms that can extract energy from the minerals around them are found under the ground all over the world. In fact, this way of life is so successful that it's thought there may be more life living beneath the Earth's surface than there is on it. And that raises an intriguing possibility. If life can thrive below the Earth's surface, why couldn't organisms like snotites survive and flourish beneath the surface of Mars? If you think about it, living below the surface of Mars might actually be quite a good idea because the surface is incredibly hostile. You know, it's subjected to intense ultraviolet radiation from the sun. It's a very cold place and the atmospheric pressure doesn't allow liquid water to exist on the surface. But if there is life below the surface of Mars, then obviously we have a problem. How could you possibly detect it? Well, actually there is a perhaps tantalizing clue that there might be something interesting going on below the Martian surface. Well, these are termites or white ants and they're very unusual animals because they eat wood. This is their food and there are many many species of these billions of individuals across the planet and in the process of digesting wood they produce the gas methane and because there are so many of them they actually produce an estimated 50 million tons of methane and pump it into the Earth's atmosphere every year. Or by active geological processes like mud volcanoes. And that makes it all the more surprising that methane has been detected in the atmosphere of the supposedly dead planet Mars. It was telescopes on Earth using infrared spectroscopy that first identified methane in Mars's tenuous atmosphere. Those first measurements appeared to show only tiny amounts. But closer observations have revealed that the gas is concentrated in a handful of plumes that vary with the seasons. In the warmer summer months, thousands of tons of the gas is released from vents in the surface. Something under the surface of Mars must be producing it. It may be coming from previously unknown geological processes. But it could be that it's coming from a biological source. Now no one, I don't think, is seriously suggesting that there are termites running around beneath the surface of Mars. But it's not actually the termites that are particularly interesting about this story. It's the way they digest the wood. You see, they use symbiotic bacteria, bacteria that live in their guts called archaea. And archaea, these bacteria that can digest wood and produce methane, are the most common organisms beneath the surface of the earth. The snotites are members of the archaea, as are many of the microorganisms found living around deep sea hydrothermal vents. In fact, it's archaea that we find thriving in many of the Earth's most extreme environments. So I think it's quite a fascinating prospect that the methane we see in Mars's atmosphere might just be produced by organisms like archaea living below the Martian surface. But while Mars remains a tantalising possibility, it's no longer the only place in the solar system we think could harbour alien life. <laughs> 